ego is this flowing nature. It is not like, like, unlike anything in the universe, it flows. Read anything in Zen or Alan Watts or Eastern religion or philosophy, and you'll start to understand what they're talking about. Now, ego, when you haven't, you know, attained what you're going for, you're aspiring for, it's going to hold you back. It's going to try to go the other way. You know, it's going to play and tap into the fears that you have. And then once you start making that progress, it's going to flow in the opposite direction, taking you away from the very things like work and discipline and daily practice. It's going to take you away from those things. in that yin and yang manner. So use this indication in the beginning as an impetus to do the work. Doing the work every day, small steps, is what will crush ego, crush that that demon. Now, as you get going, as you've done this iterative process over and over and over, soon the ego will realize, hey, I've got to switch up my approach to handling this powerful person, the person that does the work. So it'll go the opposite way. And this is where you double down. It's trying to trick you. It's trying to take you away from your principles, your values, and the work. Value discipline and practice it daily. And crush it. Just remember the ego is going to flow. It's going to be the yin to your yang, or vice versa. It's going to be that shapeshifter, that deceiver. And it's not you. That's not you. That is a part of you that lives inside the vessel that we inhabit in our bodies. There's you... There's that ego, and then there's that spirit. Relinquishing power to the spirit helps us attract the muse, and I think that's where ideas come from. I think we allow ourselves to be open. It's not us thinking about them. And on the opposite, the ego also lives inside of us. It's not us, though. It's not you. It's just in there. And learning to use the subtle cues that it gives you, such as wanting to start something and you feel that fear. That's your ego telling you, you don't need to do that. It's okay. Use that cue and take a step forward. And every time you take a step forward, you're crushing the ego a little bit more. But realize that thing isn't going to die. It's not going to die. It may lose all of its power over you, but it's going to be with you for the rest of your life. So what we need to do is we need to make friends with it. We need to understand it. We need to understand it like we understand ourselves. So go inside of this vessel that you carry with you every day and explore 
every part of it. See where the spirit lies. See where the ego lies. See where you fit in all of this. And understand that it's you who have the, that has the power, the controls of this vessel. You do. Don't relinquish your power or else the ego will take it. Now, you can relinquish your power, but that is through, through conscious control to release from attachment. We want to be detached. And that's where the spirit comes in and can give us things that we could not give ourselves. So I just wanted to give you that this morning. The ego is going to play that yin and yang game, that flowing nature game, trying to trick you, trying to stop you. And what you need to do is stay disciplined, stay practiced. Remember the poem, Boots, and take a step.